This video focuses on the auditing of the process of material change control in a first tier automotive supplier. That supplies product to Ford, Volkswagen and Renault. The auditor is auditing the procurement manager who is also responsible for communication with the customer. Watch this video and identify whether the auditor undertakes an effective audit. Uh, good morning. So I saw in the management review records uh, that you have had some issues related to material shortages in the supply chain, especially in the injection molding raw materials. Can you explain this to me further? Yeah, well, it's been a, a, a big issue. It's been a massive challenge for us over the last couple of months um, to, to have sufficient raw material around us. Yeah, and I know this has been a real problem in the, the supply chain. How have you managed to keep enough supply? So for, for the injection moulding materials, we normally purchase those through an approved distributor, uh, and they're based fairly local to us. Um, but they made us aware that they were running short of this particular material, the C6540 LSR material. Um, this comes from DuPont and we decided that we would approach them directly to see if okay. we could buy in, in bulk. Um, they agreed, but the only problem was they couldn't supply us the 540 grade, only the 530. Okay, yeah. And how did you consider the risk then in that change from 540 to 530? Um, well, obviously we talked to the supplier in the first instance and they told us that it, it should behave in exactly the same way as the 540 and give the same properties. Um, we ordered a, a, a sort of sample bag, did some internal trials and, and we were comfortable with the results that we got from those. Okay, so I'm going to follow up on that soon. How about the communication with the customer? Um, so for, we only use 540 material um, for Ford. So it was, it was that material that we couldn't get hold of. Um, I went through the test results, um, or our quality team went through the test results with the new material and they said they were happy. Uh, they gave us the approval to use the 530 material initially up for, for 90 days. So we had like a, a okay. concession. Yeah. Um, and they're asking us just to make reference to this concession on all deliveries um, and, and increase the amount of testing we're doing on the batch. So could you show me that approval from Ford? Uh, yes, I think I can. Yeah. Right, thank you. Um, so just give me a minute. Okay. Now that that's clear, uh, can you show me evidence that you review the risk in the PFMEA and the control plan? Um, we didn't review the FMEA as such, but we did our own risk analysis. Um, and we also issued a temporary work instruction. So if I could see those two things, if I could see the risk analysis and if I could see the temporary work that instruction. That is the risk analysis. Okay, and can I see the temporary work instruction? Yeah, so it's that sort of... Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but what you're showing me really is not acceptable. Uh, okay, well, that's what we, because this has happened a couple of times, and we've done this before. Um, we did it for a similar change we, we had to make last year, and I don't think it was you last time during the audit, but your colleague found it perfectly acceptable. Right, but now, yeah, I'm auditing, not my, my colleague. So these requirements have changed through a sanctioned interpretation through a sanctioned interpretation. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know there had been a change. Uh, I, I, is that a recent sanctioned interpretation? Yeah, a recent. Do you want me to quote you the number? Um, well, no, don't, I'll, I'll go back and review um, the, uh, they're on the website, aren't they? I can go back and review 
the sanction interpretations. Um, and I'll, I'll look at these documents and make sure that we are meeting that uh, revised requirement. Yeah, and don't just look at the current uh, products and changes that you've made. You need to look back into history and you need to rework all of those as well as part of the sanction change. The sanction change, you need to look backwards and you need to look forward. So forwards. even the changes that we made before the sanction interpretation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. yeah. No, you have to, you okay. have to look back. Right, I uh, will do okay. that. Yeah. So I think you've got some work to do there. But yeah. no, thank you for sharing okay. these with me. Thank you. Let's summarise. Many organisations in the automotive supply chain are experiencing issues with material shortages and have to look for other sources of supply to ensure they can meet customer delivery requirements. In this situation, the organisation had correctly had communication with the customer and gained approval for a temporary deviation to use an alternative material. In this case, as long as there is documented evidence of a risk assessment, IETF does not specifically state that this has to be done in an FMEA format. The auditor incorrectly stated there had been a sanctioned interpretation related to this situation without even quoting a sanction interpretation number. Even if there had been a sanction interpretation, there would be no need retrospectively to go back and rework all the previous documentation that had been created before the issue of the sanctioned interpretation. So let's summarize the key learning points. Before making any changes in any material, customer approval should be sought. Auditors should not invent requirements and they should always remain factual, quoting actual requirements.